Geometry Dash 1.9, arguably the golden age of the Geometry Dash community. Some of the greatest and most iconic levels were being released, and people pushed the boundaries of what was thought to be possible, and everyone was pretty tight with one another, with drama rarely coming up for most of the update. At the time, Riot and Cyclic were the undisputed kings of the game. Riot's project, Bloodbath, had been in the works for quite some time, and Cyclic had been working on a rather different level. Cyclic's level would follow the style of a popular level trend started by Zerberos all the way back in January 2015. While Riot's project was red, Cyclic's project was in its contrast, being blue. The levels were quickly perceived as perfect rivals of one another, and they had been in the works for months. The difference between the two was that Bloodbath was a mega club, and all of the progress made was public, whereas on Cyclic's level, we only saw tiny bits and pieces, leaving what was to come a mystery for most. Eventually, however, Cyclic would wrap everything up and prepared for the verification. And just a day later, on June 21st, 2015, Cyclic revealed his awaited masterpiece known as Sonic Wave to the World. The hardest nine circles level ever made at the time by far, Sonic Wave's difficulty blew everyone away. It definitely wasn't the most visually appealing level of its kind, but that didn't matter to most. Red versus blue, there it was. After some time, however, Cyclic began to feel some pressure against him due to the lack in quality compared to other Nine Circles levels released at the time. To solve this problem, on July 11th, Cyclic decided to put up a poll on GW to decide the color scheme of an update that Cyclic would be giving to the level. The choices were as follows. Black, dark blue, royal blue, green, yellow, and orange. The obvious choice seemed pretty clear at the time, and dark blue pulled through as the winner having exactly a third of all the votes. Cyclic then decided to delete the light blue version, and on July 19th, he verified one of the most infamous levels in all of Geometry Dash. Or did he? Cyclic's recording of the new Sonic Wave is, even still, one of the most controversial and most important videos in all of the game's history. It was the new hardest demon at that point, despite people not being sure about where it compared with levels like Cataclysm. That didn't matter for too long, however, and the focus quickly shifted to Riot, as he finally verified Bloodbath on August 12th, 2015, verifying it on stream as well. Oh my god! <laughs> Afterwards, people started to realize how hard Sonic Wave supposedly was, and it began to raise some questions. How could someone beat a level as hard as Sonic Wave on a 60Hz laptop all the way back in 2015? How is it possible? Even for someone who was as good as the game as Cyclic? Suspicions began to grow, and more and more people began leaning towards the idea that Cyclic hacking Sonic Wave was the only way this could have been done. The pressure kept increasing, and it all eventually became too much for him. And on August 7th, Cyclic updated Sonic Wave to a Back on Track remake, which is now referred to as Cyclic on Track. Along with that, he confessed to splicing the verification video of old Sonic Wave. He then made all his levels free and deleted all traces of himself. And just like that, Cyclic had vanished. At this point, we're in Geometry Dash 2.0, and there were not that many copies of Sonic Wave floating around on the servers, but the community's interest in the level remained. With players getting better and better, a few started practicing the level, making some progress. This is truly the beginning of the longest and most pressurous race that the Geometry Dash community has ever seen. This is the race to beat Sonic Wave. About three months had passed since Cyclic left the community, and no progress had been made. Despite the community's interest in the level still vastly remaining, nobody seemed to be good enough to make any progress. The first documented progress on the level came from Cyclic's main rival, Riot. Riot's first significant progress came from when he pulled off a short run of 64-84 on September 19, 2015.
After Riot's run of 64 to 84, things seemed pretty dormant once more, and nobody would make any progress on the level for about a month. This was until a rising player surfaced completely out of the blue. The next five documented progression videos on the level would all come from the same guy. He was grinding Sonic Wave heavily, and all eyes quickly fell upon him. His name was Mephaway. Mephaway was not your average player to say the least. Most willing to beat an extreme demon had slowly bumped up their hardest demons until they were ready. Not him. Mephaway's hardest demon before he started grinding Sonic Wave was Decode, and on top of that, Mephaway's buffs to the level were absolutely insane. No one knew how he was doing it. And throughout all of October and into November, Mephaway was getting new best after new best. We're now in the year 2016, and the last progress we saw on Sonic Wave came from Methyl, getting 72% on November 8th. And into January, no new progression came from anyone, until on January 15th, the focus shifted back to none other than Riot. In two days, he would get runs of 64 to 100 and 28 to 82 before slowing down a bit. No progress would be made on the level for about two months, until Methaway one-upped his previous progression, this time getting 75%. 75, no! Fuck! The date that he got 75 is unknown, but all we know is that he achieved this new best somewhere in March 2016. But on March 25th, Methaway would shock everyone. Mephaway died to his own buffs at the very end of this monumental level. He was seconds away from ending the most intense race in the game's history, but died at the very end. Five days later, Riot would return to making Sonic Wave progress, but it wasn't the original Sonic Wave. With help from Viperin, on March 30th, Riot showcased Sonic Wave Infinity to the world doing a run of 39 to 100. After showcasing Sonic Wave Infinity, a month passed by with nothing. Progress was slow, and it took almost a month for Riot to make another progress, this time getting 72%. While Riot was beating his version of the level, Serpunge and Funny Game had been quietly making a version for Methyl. Sonic Wave Rebirth built by Serpunch and Funny Game, has stood the test of time really well. While the decoration in the level is okay today, back then this level looked outstanding. The level was said to be verified by Mephi, and it also carried over the buffs from Mephi's version of Sonic Wave as well. After getting 55%, however, Mephi suddenly vanished and quit the game. A little over a week goes by, and the focus shifts back to Riot as he gets 81% on Sonic Wave Infinity. Nobody would make any progress for a solid two months before the focus shifted yet again. But the player was neither Riot or Meth. The player in question was a player who had beaten extremes like Bloodbath and Betrayal of Fate. We are talking about the rising Korean player, Quirk.
Core seemingly out of nowhere got 81% on Sonic Wave on July 26, 2016, with no other progress on Sonic Wave. People were really surprised by what Core was capable of in such a short amount of time. Core would also get 90 just a day later, before fading into the darkness, and then later being revealed that Core was a social experiment, started by Wabbit earlier that month. Players like Riot had insight on the experiment while it was happening, but everyone thought that Core was just a god at the game, when really it was a group of players pretending to be one player, simulating the perfect player. Both of the Sonic Wave runs that Core achieved were achieved by Mephil. Progress would be silent for a while after this, with no one making progress for about two months. But on September 6th, a player that was neither Riot, Mephoe, or Core would seemingly out of nowhere get a run of 28 to 90. The player in question? Jake N2436. Better known as Furry Dash at the time, Jake was a British Geometry Dash player with achievements like Cataclysm and Ice Carbon Diablo X. He wouldn't make further progression until a month after his first major progress video, getting 75% on July 27th. With all eyes on Jake, he slowed down a bit. By this point, the race was really intense. More and more players were making progress on the level, and it was only a matter of time before it was finally over. The next player to make Sonic Wave progress was yet another new player in the race. Well known in the community for being the first victor of Sukup in Hell, we are talking about none other than Trust. He began playing Sonic Wave in October and quickly made promising progress, getting runs of 43% and 42 to 100 in just two days. Trusta was making really promising progression on the level before it finally ended. On October 10th, 2016, the monumental race had finally been achieved. The victor of the level was not Riot, not Mephoe, not Jake, not Trusta, the player was a guy named X White. A guy named Eclipse posted on the GD forums that a guy named X White had completed Sonic Wave. While the recording of Sonic Wave looked semi normal to an average viewer, it didn't take long for people to realize that Whiten's video was no clue, and the race continued once again with no victor. Progress would resume once again, with Riot returning to the original version of Sonic Wave, getting 76%. And on November 12th, a new player entered the race. His name is Auro. Auro, or Auroras, got 91% seemingly out of nowhere on November 12th. Many were surprised, but not too long after him getting 91, it was revealed that Auro's run of 91 was speed hack. And just six days later, something devastating happened. The race was more anticipated than ever before, with Riot being the second player in the race to die past 90, behind Mephile. This fail would prove to be the most demotivating fail in Riot's contribution to this monster of a race, and not too long after, Riot made zero progress and slowly faded out of the race. He was done. And only a day later, another player went into the race. He streamed all of his attempts on his YouTube channel and was slowly making really promising progress. Coming from Mexico, his name is Sonix. Sonix was one of the best players in the game. At this point, Sonix had beaten levels like Athanatos, Sukup in Hell, Katabath, and many other levels. With a player like him going for Sonic Wave, it was only a matter of time before one of the most famous levels in all of the game would finally have a legitimate victory. Five days went by with nothing, and on November 25th, 2016,
After a staggering one year and five months, the most infamous level race in all of the game's history had finally come to an end, and Sunix was the guy to do it. With over five people making insane progress on the level over the course of a year, this was just unbelievable. It broke new ground. The level was rated almost immediately after Sonix uploaded it, and that concludes the Sonic Wave race. Many tried, many tried making hacked progression, and six remakes of Sonic Wave were made just before the level had one victor. This has been the race to beat Sonic Wave. Thanks for watching.